Good morning everyone, how are you doing? It's Paul here from Unusual Things. Make sure my mic is on, yes it is. Uh, today I am at Woodman's Coat, uh, St Peter's Churchyard, which is right behind me off the main road, which isn't too far from Brighton. And we come to find the final resting place of James Herbert, the author. I'll tell you a little bit more about James real soon. Um, now don't forget, if you like the video today, please uh, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, maybe subscribe to the channel, you might enjoy it and uh, leave your comments down below. Are you a big reader of James Herbert's work? I remember reading The Rats when I was younger and it scared the living daylights out of me. A, I had rats at the time, which were pets, and B, I wasn't a big reader. My imagination just went a bit too crazy, I think. So uh, yeah, we're going in now. It looks like there's a parking place there, but I don't know how to get to it. Um, so I'm quite happy to risk leaving my car here, I think. But no, I can see where you can park now. I'm going to go and park. Cool, we got in the car park. That's all right. I didn't realise it was there. It was just parked outside the main churchyard. So um, I'll tell you now a little bit more about James Herbert. James John Herbert, OBE, 8th of April 1943 to the 20th of March 2013, was an English horror writer. A full-time writer, he also designed his own book covers and publicity. His books have sold 54 million copies worldwide and have been translated into 34 languages, including Chinese and Russian. Born in London, Herbert was the son of Herbert Herbert, a storeholder at London's Brick Lane Market. He attended a Catholic school in Bethnal Green, called Our Lady of the Assumption, then at 11 won a scholarship to St. Aloysius Grammar School in Highgate. He left school at 15 and studied at Hornsey College of Arts, joining the art department of John Collings, a small advertising agency. He left the agency to join Charles Barker Advertising, where he worked as art director and then group head. James lived in Woodmancote near Henfield in West Sussex. He had two brothers, Peter, a retired market trader, and John, an insurance broker. Herbert would write his drafts in longhand on jumbo pads. In 1979, he had to pay damages when it was ruled that he had based part of his novel, The Spear, on the work of another writer, The Spear of Destiny, by Trevor Ravenscroft. In 2010, Herbert was honoured with the World Horror Convention Grand Master Award presented to him by Stephen King. Later in the same year, he was appointed an officer of the Order of the British Empire, OBE, in the 2010 Birthday Honours, presented by Prince Charles. His first two books, The Rats and the Fog, were disaster novels with man-eating giant black rats in the first and an accidentally released chemical weapon in the second. The first print of The Rats, 100,000 copies, sold out in three weeks. Herbert wrote three sequels to The Rats, Lair, which deals with a second outbreak of the mutant black rats, this time in the countryside around Epping Forest rather than in the first book's London slums. In Domain, a nuclear war results in rats having become the dominant species in a devastated city. The third sequel, the graphic novel The City, is an adventure set in the post-nuclear future. With his third novel, the ghost story The Survivor, Herbert used supernatural horror rather than the science fiction horror of his first two books. In Shrine, he explored his Roman Catholic heritage with the story of an apparent miracle which turns out to be something much more sinister. Haunted, the story of a skeptical paranormal investigator taunted by malicious ghosts began life as a screenplay for the BBC, though this was not the screenplay used in the eventual film version. Its sequels were The Ghosts of Sleaf and Ash. Others of Herbert's books such as Moon and Portent are structured as thrillers and include espionage and detective story elements along with the supernatural. The Jonah is in large part of the story of a police investigation, a bit by a policeman whose life is overshadowed by a supernatural presence. The Spear deals with a neo-Nazi cult in Britain and an international conspiracy which includes a right-wing US general and an arms dealer. Herbert released a new novel virtually every year from 1974 to 1988. He wrote six novels during the 1990s and released three new works in the 2000s. I am very insecure about being a writer, he stated in the book Faces of Fear. I don't understand why I am so successful, and the longer I stay that way, the better it's going to be, because that's what keeps me on the edge, striving if you like. Herbert's final novel has an eerie political edge. Ash imagines Princess Diana and her secret son, as well as Lord Lucan, Colonel Gaddafi, and Robert Maxwell living together in a Scottish castle. Herbert was the subject of This Is Your Life programme in 1995, when he was surprised by Michael Aspel at the London Dungeon. Herbert was by no means literary, but his work had raw urgency, said Stephen King, 
His best novels, The Rats and the Fog, had the effect of Mike Tyson in the, his championship days. No finesse or crude power. Those books were bestsellers because many readers, including me, were too horrified to put them down. On the 20th of March 2013, Herbert died suddenly at his home in Sussex at the age of 69. No cause of death was given, but a spokeswoman for the publisher said that he had not been ill. He is survived by his wife Eileen and three daughters. His estate was valued at 8.3 million. So there's all the information there about James Herbert. Um, taken way too young, really. You imagine the amount of books he could have just keep writing, really. Uh, it fascinates me with these writers, how they just do it constantly. Boom, boom, boom. The concentration, uh, keeping up on where you are. I, I tried to write a book about 15 years ago, and I'm still trying to write it now, um, which I think is a really good idea. But I just can't get around to finishing it. Oh, hello. Um, I said, keep off my grass. Does that mean someone's in if the bow is ringing? There's only one way to find out. Let's go have a look, shall we? Now, it does look like there are some lights on in there. Whether or not that's a promising sign, I don't know. Some people say that about me. There's some lights on, but it's not very promising. Let's go and have a look, shall we? Ooh, that's open. Ooh, it's a star. Hello, how are you? Do you mind me just filming in here? Oh, thank you. I've just been walking around the churchyard and it's a, it's a beautiful place. Um, I don't mind. I quite like it in the dark. It looks cool. <laughs> if you want to put some lights on those, it's entirely up to you. That's all right. I just want to have a little film around. Um, it's a beautiful place, isn't it? Do you, do you work here as a volunteer or are you... Um... Oh, okay. I'm always respectful of people's um, wishes, but... <laughs> no, 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 you're okay. It's just... Wow, it's gorgeous. How old is it, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, okay, thank you. I'll, I'll take that away and uh, have a look. Wow. And is that the, uh... oh, okay, yeah. Oh, thank you for that. That's right. Oh, wonderful. Oh, yeah, get that in there, yeah. It's always worth having some bits. I'll keep you out of the way, Barry. <laughs> and that's the description there, is it? Is that... Oh, in the pamphlet you gave me. Oh, brilliant, thank you for that, Barry. Um, right, I'll leave you in peace now. Thank, okay. thank you so much. Ooh. So there's the, um, the church yet yeah, there. Now, I was speaking to Barry inside, and Barry didn't want to be on camera, so I understand that. Um, but he was telling me about some different things. Now, um, but he didn't even want to speak on camera, bless him. But Barry, if you do watch this, thank you so much for giving me some pamphlets and some information. Now, I just want to tell you guys, while I'm here, it's a bit windy, so I'm all over the place, about this. Let me show you this. Okay, so this is the Woodman Coat Martyrs. And Barry is just telling me the story about these two gentlemen, Thomas Harland and John Oswald. Um, both of the parish burnt at the stake for their faith at Lewis on the 6th of June, 1556. Faithful unto death. Okay, now, now what Barry was telling me about these two gentlemen was that they would not um, speak in Latin at all when doing services and things like that. They would only speak in English and they refused to uh, speak in Latin. Um, so because of that, they got burnt at the stake. What the hell is all that about? Could you imagine that at, at school? Hey, I don't want to do Latin today, sir. <sighs> Flame for her out. It's bonkers. How many years ago? 500 odd years ago, six, nearly 600 years. Absolutely mad, isn't it? It's, um, it's, it's beyond belief how we used to live back then as people, as humans, I suppose. But I suppose back then as well, the religious element of life took over, didn't it? You know, you had to be scared of the church and all that sort of stuff. 
Um, hopefully you can hear me if it's not too windy. It's a bit windy now. Um, and people were. But those ones that wouldn't obviously paid the ultimate price, you know. If they didn't do what the church said or they just done their own thing or whatever, then, uh, you know, you get at the old steak getting burnt alive. Anyway, been having a good look round. So we've gone off topic. We've got in the church, which is a good thing. And we're having a little look around. I think I found it. I'm hoping there's no rats running around James's grave. There shouldn't be. He only wrote about them. He didn't keep them, of course. I don't know, he might have done. You never know, do you? Um, but here we go. Just a lovely little unassuming headstone. Which is what I like to see with um, well-known people and people that have been in the public eye. James Herbert OBE, storyteller. 8th of April 1943 to the 20th of March 2013. Husband, father, grandfather. Death is but the key. Right, now what I want to show you guys, of course it's got these initials at the top there, is this on the back, which I absolutely love. And I saw it as soon as I walked in, but obviously I have to walk around and do my bits and bobs first. But look at that. Wow. That's amazing. I love things like that. Honestly, when I go, I want something like, not necessarily that, but something a bit different. It's a bit strange on mine. So there we have it, guys. The final resting place of James Herbert. Amazing author. Great horror writer. I love horror stuff. Um, what an amazing talent. And sadly taken too young as far as I'm concerned. So bless you, James. What a beautiful, beautiful headstone. It really is. Um, thank you for all the the people out there that love to have re read your stuff and still do read your stuff. Um, amazing, amazing gentlemen. Um, so there we have it guys, the final resting place of James Herbert. It's just, I love the, I love unassuming little headstones. I think they're so cool and they're so, they're not cool, but you know, what I mean? they're just so um, humble. That's the word I'm looking for. They're humble. They're just, you know, not being identified here i am stand out type of headstone but to be fair there's not many celebrities that i've been to that have that sort of thing not really um apart from was it karl marx and highgate one with his massive head on it big old swede on top you know but other than that no one else has really had a massive um, headstone so far have they or anything like that that we've seen anyway thank you to Barry uh, in the churchyard there it was very very helpful gave us some information thank you guys as always for watching don't forget if you like today's video please leave your comments down below tell me your favorite book of James Herbert do you still read his stuff have you read all his stuff uh, leave your comments down below if you like the video one of them and please subscribe to the channel and uh, I will see you all on the next one real soon take it easy tell that